Welcome, everyone. My name is Renee, and I am on the call with Mary Kay Simmons and Ryan. And so we just want to welcome all of you to our healing teleclass tonight. And before we get started, I want to thank Catherine for greeting everyone on the call and for Craig providing the technical support behind the scenes. So thank you so much, you guys. So our theme tonight is about bringing in the sacred into your everyday life. But I think before we kind of delve into and and get into our topic tonight, Mary Kay and Ryan, would you guys open this session with a prayer for us? We'd love to. So let's take a couple of deep breaths and ground ourselves and center ourselves and ask our guides and spirit guides and angels, our guardian angels, and our ancestors who walk with us and the divine to be with us throughout this time. Oh, divine creator, reveal your presence within me that I may know the purpose for which I was created. Fill me with creativity so that I may bear the fruit of your will. Grant me the wisdom to produce and to share whatever is truly of service. Keep me on the path of of true purpose. Help me to discover the rich opportunity of each present moment. For you are the ground of my being, the power of my fulfillment. You're the joy in my work, the peace that calls me to rest when the day is done. In you, I am made whole again. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I, I invite everyone to continue breathing and ask the Holy Spirit to be here now, be present with us, enter our heart, enter our mind. Joshua, be here now. Divine Mother, be with us. And all the saints and sages and angels that support this ministry, we invoke your presence and your support and your love and your truth. And tonight, let these words be the words of our Creator, be the love of our Creator, and be the truth of our Creator. Let us rest in his presence and her presence and know that we are one. All of us, we are one, we are beloved, and we are all the firstborn of our Creator. And I ask for healing on many levels tonight, throughout this call, and at the end of the call as well. And thank you so much. Thank you for letting us be channels for your presence. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you both. Wow, that was great. I know this is a topic that the three of us have talked about in terms of bringing the sacred into everyday life, but I'd curious to know from both of you, like, what does that mean? Like, what does the word sacred or sacredness mean for you guys? What does that look like for you? Well, for me, we've talked a lot about this, but for me, it's really the mundane of everyday life. How can I have the connection with the divine, with my divine, every moment in my day? So if it's washing dishes or driving to doing errands or my work, and how is it that I can stay connected and have the divine presence with me? All of the different things that happen, how can I really stay connected and listen while I'm staying connected? Yeah. How about for you, Ryan? What does what does that mean? Be, you know, what does sacred mm-hmm. or sacredness mean for you? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of similarities to what MK said, and I'll I'll express it from another lens as well. So, it I have my own concepts of what the sacred is, and you know, which doesn't which limits I think what is possible. And so, one of my commitments is to really notice everything around me and what it's speaking to me, what it's saying to me. And I do that because generally it's a reflection. A lot of things are a reflection of my own divinity. And that's my own take on sacredness is when we have 
divinity reflect it back to us as a remembrance mm-hmm. of who we are and mm-hmm. why we're here. Mm-hmm. So I'm as often as I can and remember and commit to, I, you know, we'll use, for example, a tree. I never used to do this, <laughs> but I do it now. Well, I'll walk by a tree and I'll look at it and I'll say, well, well, in this moment, if I really listen to the tree and to my guides and to God, then I'll have reflected the stillness that the tree demonstrates is the stillness in myself, for example. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm looking at an ocean waves that are crashing, kind of going up and mm-hmm. down, I'll, I'll notice mm-hmm. that that's also a you know, reflection of the movement of energy moving through me, whether it's thoughts or emotions, and that, mm-hmm. like the ocean, I'm just a, a space to allow those things to move. So there's, there's always a, a level of depth that, we can, that I can go to, that I invite myself into if I'm, particularly if I'm feeling scattered, I yeah. can very quickly lose the sacredness of the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's it for you, Renee? Well, I was a little bit of both of what you both were saying is that, mm-hmm. you know, from the time I wake up, it's really about gratitude thanking God for this day Mm -hmm. and hey I really want to work on being a blessing to people but I also see it as it's every interaction that I have with people it's like what you were saying getting up walking walking the dog doing the dishes house cleaning all of those things we can be in the present moment come to that place like Ryan what you were talking about the stillness and really go deep within and stay in that present moment, stay in that place of stillness and still go throughout my day and honoring the divine and bringing in more light to every interaction or everything that I do. So for me, that is what I think about in terms of sacredness and devotion. I believe everything is God and God meets us where we're at and that every moment is an acceptable, it's holy It's that whispering of truth Mm -hmm. and love. But then, too, I think the flip side is, I guess, we have to think about what happens during those times where it's being challenging or being hard, and how do you then bring the sacredness or keep that sacredness in that moment, even though you might be being challenged. And, you know, I just was wondering, what did you guys think about or how do you reframe and maintain that sacredness if you're going through a really challenging situation. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking about what you said about commitment, and one of the things that practices that I've been putting into place for a while has been as soon as I open my eyes, I start asking for the divine to connect, to be with me, but also what my commitment is to the divine around having my words be the divine's words or my way of looking at things be through his eyes or her eyes, not mine. And mm-hmm. and I think that having that commitment and reminding myself throughout the day when I get challenged, then I'm able to go back to that commitment, take a pause, take a breath, be quiet for a minute, <laughs> which I'm learning mm-hmm. to do better more and more. But really, and then to look and see, is there something for me to do here? Is it just witnessing the upset or witnessing the tension or whatever's going on? Or is there something I need to do? And then listening for that and see if I I can be present enough to listen to what direction I should go. Mm. Yeah. What does that look like for you, Ryan? Well, I have to pause in those moments I have to pause a lot and Mm -hmm. with awareness I remember Mm -hmm. that in in those moments where I'm perceiving a challenge that I am remembering that I'm I've become separate in some way I've chosen to become separate from the divine Mm -hmm. and when I remember that 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 opens the door for everything else for the grace because it's it's a windy road down when you start when you really when you believe we're really separate mm-hmm. in some way that I'm alone in this situation which is an easy place to go mm-hmm. I'm the only one experiencing this or somehow when is yeah. something going to turn around and there's some I, I heard one time that the, that sadness the emotion of sadness it represents our perception that we're alone 
So for feeling mm-hmm. sadness, it's some mm-hmm. old ind- experience we had where we thought we were alone. And mm-hmm. so re- something's triggering that experience that we think we're alone. We're, we perceive that. So for myself, that is a place I can go. And I remember, you know, through my commitment that, that, I, am, that I am connected, mm-hmm. that I am blessed. Mm-hmm. There's a beautiful author by the name of Henry Nouwen. I believe he was a priest, and he wrote a lot. He wrote a book called The Life of the Beloved, which I refer back to quite often. And he speaks about us as, as the beloved, like many mystics do, that we all embody qualities of the divine. And we remember those. We, in many ways, we yearn for them, and the reason we yearn for them is because we remember them. So there's a, for myself, what I do to help Sometimes what I do is if I'm feeling dread or sadness or anger or despair or whatever may be moving through me, I will actually pray for, my commitment is to remember my union with everybody and everything. So I'll start praying for loving kindness prayers for everyone that is experiencing that same thing in the world. And it gets me out of thinking of just myself. So if I'm experiencing anger, then I may say, I'll remember and I'll say, may all beings who have anger experience peace. Because it's not just me experiencing anger, but yeah. there's many, many beings experiencing that same emotion that are moving through them as well. So it, it immediately connects me to God's work here. I think yeah. that's one of the meanings of glorify God. How can we glorify God? Well, we can remember that we're all connected and much, much more beyond the separate self. And we can pray for each other in the midst of our own suffering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking... I do, I do pause when I'm kind of bumping up against something where I'm feeling stuck, and I do pause. And when I pause, I step back. And for me, I do something that I had learned a while ago from Padre Ron and Padre Paul, and it really helps me kind of step back and relook at a situation. But I repeat three times, peace to my thoughts peace to my feeling, peace to my emotion, and peace to this world. And by the time I said it, by the third time, I feel like something then shifts. It shifts in me. I feel like then I can step back and look at the situation and say, oh, okay. So I then reconnect back to the the divine source or the sacredness that I'm trying to bring into my daily life. But I know for me that has been very helpful. And then I also Mm -hmm. use the loving kindness. May I learn to look at myself with the eyes of understanding and compassion. May May I learn to look at her with eyes of understanding and compassion. May I learn to look at him with eyes of understanding and compassion. And may I look at them with eyes of understanding and compassion. Mm. So I try to mm-hmm. use that pause to step back, look at the situation. But yeah, it's very easy to go to get separated or disconnected mm-hmm. in that moment. But I think too, Mary Kay, you had talked about too that there are times where for you, if you're feeling stuck, like you're okay with you know, you're just like, yeah, I'm stuck. And you just kind of own it. And I just was wondering if you could say more about that for you and what that yeah. looks like. Yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking about what you were all saying. The other thing that I thought of was for myself is that I'm real tactile, so I like having things like on my desk or in the car or in, downstairs in the kitchen that remind me of my connection. So I have pictures Mm -hmm. of the divine or the Blessed Mother. She's very close, very close to the Blessed Mother. And so I have these things around to remind me of when I do get stuck. And and sometimes I'll carry a stone in my pocket at work and things, Mm -hmm. and on my desk at work, building a a small altar so that when I get reactivated or triggered by something that I can go back and I tend to go right to, you know, okay, being, being thankful for my connection. And then looking at being thankful for this, for this opportunity that's in my face, <laughs> so to speak. Mm-hmm. And how, what can I, what is that triggering in me that I need to just be with? 
And I don't have to say anything. I don't have to actually react. I can just be with it. And and then sometimes it, somebody wants you to to respond. And if I don't know, I'm now becoming much more comfortable just saying I'm stuck. I don't know. I really don't know which direction to go. I really don't know what to say at this moment. And ask mm-hmm. for a, a moment, uh, a pause. And that actually, people actually respond to that with being it okay. And it's like a time out where you get time to connect. And the other practice that I've been doing is, is just asking God to hold my hand. And in those moments, I will literally sometimes put my hand out on the desk or really concentrate on the divine holding my hand until it gets clear what I should do. And I really, it's, I'm just like so grateful for that connection and I can feel it. You know, I can feel the inspiration coming through. I can feel the warmth of his or her presence with me. And it's just, it's really moving. And then, you know, I get over my embarrassment of being stuck <laughs> and it's okay. It's really okay not to know because that's why we have divine guidance and spirit to, to help us with those. There's, there's some I, things you both said that really resonated with me. Mm-hmm. MK, you were talking about just acknowledging the stuckness. And mm-hmm. it's such an act of grace mm-hmm. to, be, to be that honest. There's so many defenses that can come up in not knowing mm-hmm. something while being in conversation yeah. or being on this call or being at work or being in a relationship. And there, there's so much conditioning around, there can be anyway, around needing to know in the, in the, in the exact moment or be in the flow, let's say, in mm-hmm. a, the way we perceive mm-hmm. flow to be, to be. And I could just feel it in my own being a, a, a relaxation when you said just admit, just accept and acknowledge that I'm stuck right yeah. now. And it's mm-hmm. such a, there's such a beautiful opening that you create for the divine to work through you, whether that is a person supporting you or, and or a flower or a, a statue, mm-hmm. a Mary, you know, it doesn't really matter. But it, it's that honesty that is so sacred in itself. Yeah, I really appreciate that, that you brought that up. I, I know that there's, everyone has this, some fear somewhere and somewhere in life that somehow we need to have it together yeah. and that, that it's sort of reinforced in the media and mm-hmm. certainly in workplaces and all kinds of areas of our lives. But the work of the divine is to really bring that honesty, that, that level of vulnerability in, and let the divine take over. Yeah. I had, I found something last night. I was, before I went to bed, I was praying and talking to my divine and I had my Bible and I just opened it and it's the Jesus Calling Devotional Bible and it opened right to this and it was, I thought it might, if it's okay, I'll read it. It's a couple paragraphs, but it was just so Mm -hmm. poignant to what we're talking about. It's titled Resting in Him and it says, Standing at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. In order to walk the good way, you need to be alert, praying in the spirit on all occasions. My spirits help you, help you can recognize, with my spirits, help you can recognize the crossroads when you come upon it, instead of rushing past the choice point without even noticing. If you are Mm -hmm. unassured which way to go, pause and wait with me stay in connection with me but you're standing and looking trust you me to show you the way forward in my timing if you follow these instructions you will not only walk in a good way you will also find rest in your soul i know how weary you are and how desperately you need full rest even when your body is still your thoughts tend to be hither and yon. If you want my help in taming those thoughts, bring them to me. I already know what you're thinking, so you, you don't have to hide anything. You need to wait in my presence, giving me time to help you think my thoughts. Though you may feel as if you are wasting time, you're actually doing the opposite. Your steps will be fewer, but you will accomplish much more. So you are, will be staying close to me, the way, the truth, the life. 
No matter how strenuous your soul, your journey, you will find soul rest in my company. I just, when I read soul rest, it just resonates so powerfully for me. Mm-hmm. I thought it might be something to share because I think that's what we're talking yeah. about. No matter. Yeah. 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 I like the part, something about asking for help. Yeah. I think sometimes that's, no, really, it's so hard to yeah. do that. And so just when you were reading that, I, I was thinking about, yeah, that's it. Asking for help and know that that's okay. And bringing, and that sacredness connection with the divine about the choice to connect, mm-hmm. to reconnect. So what you were reading is perfect because that's really what we've been talking about is not only what does sacredness mean to us, but then how do we bring it to those around us? How does that look in relationship? And I think that's perfect what you are bringing Mm -hmm. up and and how that speaks to that. Asking for help is a hard thing. It is. Mm -hmm. And I think we're also all looking for that rest, our soul resting in the divine, that Mm-hmm. Resting, um, peace in our soul, like you were talking yeah. about, you know, the prayer of peace, yeah. peace to my thoughts, peace to my yeah. feelings, and all of yeah. that goes with without saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Renee, you brought up how to bring the sacredness into the relationship. You know, what is that for you, and how does that take yeah. shape? Yeah, because you know, I was thinking about this: is none of us are living in monasteries. We're, we're all out in the world. And how do we bring that sacredness into those relationships? And for me, it goes back to my practice of being in the present moment. So when I'm listening or if somebody, like, we're on the call tonight and my focus is being able to deeply listen and hear what's being said and just when I'm interacting with someone, friends, coworkers, when we're at, during a retreat, to be fully present and be listening, not focusing on, ooh, what am I going to say next, but really hearing what that person is trying to say to me and be fully present with them. And because that's, for me, that's where the divine is, that's where the sacredness is, is in that present moment. So if we're in interaction with somebody, that's how I want to I wanna be fully present and listening and supporting them in what is it that they need in this moment, whether it's somebody to hear them, somebody to provide a prayer. Oftentimes people say, oh, could you say a prayer for me? I'm like, oh, yes, let's do that right now mm-hmm. in this moment. So I try to stay, keep myself in present time and focused in what is it that this person is looking for in this moment, what is, what's going on for them? And like Ryan, you were saying something about, and Mary Kay, like what if somebody is stuck or you're stuck or somebody else is stuck? How do we be supportive to them? Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you guys, what do you think? I was just thinking when you were saying that something came up, this picture that came up the other day, and I, I had not, I used to work at a, one of the campuses and just got to a new campus, and I was back at the old campus and ran into a dear friend that I worked with for almost five years, and she did something very odd. You know, I was with another friend, and she was all excited to see me, and then she turned her whole body and went to the other friend and gave that person a hug, and it was like, I felt this immediate, like, what is going, you know, and I felt hurt, and and then I just was returned to, she's doing the absolute best she could. She, she just is there's something going on with her, and I just stood there, and then I walked up to her and gave her a hug after she was complete, saying hello to this other person. And, and it felt really good to be able to do that because I was aware of my immediate reaction, like, well, what am I, chocolate or, you know, that kind of thing. And then I just stopped, and I said, no, she's just, whatever's going on with her, I don't know because I hadn't talked to her, but I'm really glad to see her, and I just shared my love. And it really helped just neutralize everything. And I think mm-hmm. that that's the in those moments when you can, when I can be alert and be aware of what's going on internally with me and then make a choice. It's heaven. You know, it really feels great to be able to do that. Mm. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of a, something I was just reflecting on you inspired. Okay. There's a, what I noticed is that we, we can attune to so many different 
radio stations <laughs> in our <laughs> life mm-hmm. energies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And relationship can bring up stuff where we start to tune into stations that are not helpful for us. Mm-hmm. And that that energy, that station can get really loud and amplify in the space and mm-hmm. start to take over because there's so much attention on that kind of an en- denser energy that can take over the space. And so we're no longer relating to each other as human beings. We're relating to the, the energy, thinking that that particular energy is, is that person, let's say. That's their identity. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I, I stay conscious of and have to commit to every day is what am I attuning to in the space itself when I'm with people, mm-hmm. when I'm with my partner, uh, Miriam, when I'm with clients or business colleagues, what am I attuned to? And this came to me right before the, the school that I'm in at F- FSD, Foundation for Spiritual Development, which is where Dana, Dana's school. And we use uh, colors and symbols mm. as just one, one way of attuning to an energy. And that in itself is one way that can be sacred because the color is just a, an, ener- an energy that has a certain mm-hmm. intelligence of truth and love in it. And if we had attuned to that color that maybe is right for a particular space, space we're, we're allowing in a field of sacredness. We're attuning and vibrating and resonating with, an, with the sacred that lives in that space. And, the, and so I, more and more I, I, I find ways of attuning to a tone that wants to be ex- from a uh, let's see from a, a larger perspective creator is inviting oh. always inviting us to experience as a group if we gather as a group a particular tone mm. in experience and you mm-hmm. could also imagine there is qualities you know like peace or joy so one of the things i do sometimes before a meeting with a client or a friend or anything is i'll invoke whether it's a color or let's say a uh, quality that i'm hearing or listening my guides are saying invoke this quality in the form Mm. of a tone in the form of a color a symbol or in the form of just the quality itself of peace Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that is that helps me to remember i'm not alone first of all that there Mm -hmm. is divine support and in the midst of a a relationship whatever that form that relationship is and that that energy wants to support the relating itself or a mm-hmm. compilation of energies vibrationally that can support the and enhance uh, experience. So sometimes I'd even say to past clients, like there are multiple people in the room, let's all, you know, and imagine the quality right now that you would like to, to bring into the room, uh, mm. a positive quality, let's say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like peace or, or joy or equanimity. And it's, it's amazing what will happen in the room when people give themselves permission to invoke a divine quality mm-hmm. like that. And it really sh- can shift the space and create a space for a co-creation that it, it's more powerful to have that together mm-hmm. or two or more gather. So that, that in itself can, is very sacred to be able to, that we as human beings have, have been given this power by God to invoke these qualities into a space to support us in relationship. Whether that's a difficult relationship or mm-hmm. an easy relationship, we can invoke these no matter what. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it's, wow. it's really very healing to be able to do that and to bring that space wherever we go. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah I, I love you. how you put that. We, we bring that space wherever we go. Yeah, there's an yeah. inherent sense of, sense of belonging. Mm-hmm. We, we, yeah. we belong to God. And so we belong yeah. to these, these energies. We're already connected to them. So our belonging follows us wherever we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not alone. And speaking of belonging, we have about 10 minutes left. So we can share that healing energy in the next 10 minutes. Oh, I have uh, 23 minutes left. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you know why? I, I see why. I called in early. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh no, I get it. Yeah. You're multi multi dimensional. You're seeing in the future. Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, good. kind of building on what you were saying, Ryan, because we are going to be going into the healing service part of this call. Like, what are your thoughts about 
like what you were just saying, like a tone or a quality that for all of us that are on the call tonight, you know, how could we tap into that as we get ready to go into the healing service? Am I making sense? Yeah. So I would invite everyone on the call then to allow yourself to just feel your breath first and to know that that breath is more than just breath. That's actually the spirit of God working Mm -hmm. through you in a tangible way, that that is accessible all the time. And then this breath moves in and out, and that you are connected to the earth. We are all connected. And grounding, allow ourselves to ground because this energy is palpable and we want it to be able to ground. And there is a space within you that is untouched by distortion or fear or doubt that it's pure. It's a direct connection. There's no mediator needed. It's a direct connection you have. to allow yourself to know that this direct connection has always been there and it always will be there. It's in there in this moment. It's a space of emptiness and fullness, both pulsating. And just listen in this moment What do you see as a color that represents you in this moment or a tone, like a musical instrument or a quality? And just see what comes to you right now. And just imagine that that color or tone or quality is sitting above your head is in your heart, is in your mind. Imagine that radiating out into all parts of your being, into your toes and your fingers and your fingernails, your intestines and your heart, your ribs, your knees, ankles and legs, in your neck, in your eyes, your brain. This color, this tone, this quality is amplifying, working its way through the DNA, through all the molecules of your body, your energy body. It's all around you. This quality is freely given. This is the tone you were born with. This color is your birthright. It is yours to relax into, to rest in, to be present with, to step into, to be surrounded by and infused with. It is you. This is your gift from God. This is your gift to yourself. This is your gift to others, just by being here present right now. And that is sacred. If you want to share anything, Renee or MK, feel free. Yeah. Divine Father, Mother God, we now feel your presence and your Holy Spirit. 
We feel your loving embrace and we sense your healing presence flowing through us. We feel this presence moving within our whole being. We sense this healing light and energy moving to that place within us that is in need of your healing divine energy. Precious spirit of the living God, breath of life, you are raising us up into a new life, a new awareness of your love, your compassion, and your understanding that heals. And we accept this. We receive it right now. For you love us unconditionally. And for this, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you for your healing presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, Blessed Mother, for being in our every breath that we take, for guiding us and staying with us no matter how difficult the situations are. We thank you for this call tonight, for everybody who's on the call. We thank you for your presence in healing us in every part of our body and mind that we need. And we thank you for Padre Paul and the bishops for all the miracles that will happen. We're so grateful and thankful for all that you do for us. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to pray for all those people with challenges in their brain right now that are having some imbalances, even people that may have brain surgery that this healing light enter and recalibrate and balance out both sides of the brain, all aspects of the mind to recalibrate, to transform, to allow the divine mind to take over, to allow for a healing of people with knee injuries, that they, they recalibrate as well. Allow this healing energy, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to surround the ligaments and the bones and the blood, to fill the blood with divine energy, to heal bones in the body, to restore eyesight, And we getting also the bladder to heal the bladder and kidneys. Restore that to health. And you are safe in this world. You are safe with the divine. Yeah. Allow yourself to take that in. That you are safe and your kidneys are restored. That you walk with God. I'm also being asked to share those with financial challenges to know that God works in wondrous ways, in ways that are outside of our view and our lens, and to stay open to the wonders of how God works, allowing money to enter bank accounts, new homes, ease with finances, more work and clients to know your inherent value that you are wondrously made by God you are here for a divine purpose and you will be positioned everyone is being positioned now to be in the right place no matter what that seems like what that looks like right now you are being positioned through the perceived ups and downs God wants you where God wants you. And you are being taken care of. 
You will be taken care of. You are safe. Abundance lives within you. I'll just open that up to you too if you see anything else you want to add. I just speak to spinal and something about spinal cord and just realigning the spine, straightened, back in alignment, all muscles, bones, tendons, ligaments, just to all come back into alignment. No pain, just dissolving of the pain that's with spinal, something about spinal cords. I'm going to jump in. Okay, also a healing of past relationships, healing with the mother-father in physical form and our spiritual mother and father. And let us all see the divine in each other. I ask Mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit provide that level of safety and vulnerability and an open heart with each other. And in those Mm -hmm. close, intimate relationships, whether that is our family, friends, or colleagues at work, people in our community, to know that these relationships are being healed now. This is a year of healing relationships. Mm -hmm. And I ask and invoke the divine, invoke your guides, I invoke invoke God to heal these relationships, to allow movement, a release of the old, a movement towards the new, Mm -hmm. stepping in stepping into the new relationships. Yeah. I also, to add to that, I ask for patience for each one of us in these relationships where we may think or it looks like it's not moving, but just to keep our gratitude and patience that God works in mysterious ways and that there is movement, whether we can see it or experience it and just allow that to unfold as God, in God's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are wondrously made. (laughs) We are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a prayer that MK that you sent to Renee and myself just as a way to help anchor this. So Mm -hmm. this wants to be shared. So wonderful Lord God, Father, Mother, eternal mystery, divine healing presence. I believe in your boundless, unchanging love. My divine parent, I intend to forget the past, and I no longer desire to focus on the future with fear and anxiety. I want to live this present moment in peace, in your presence, knowing that you are for me and not against me. I rest in the awareness of your love and mercy. Unite it with your presence and your power. I am filled with gratitude. Thank you for the good you are bringing into my life this very moment. I am confident of this one thing, that you who have begun this good work in me and through me are bringing it to completion. So be it. God is faithful. Mm. Thanks so much. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank I loved it when I read it the account. first time. <laughs> yeah, it's first, beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah, thank you. Yeah, to anchor in this healing presence that's moved throughout this call tonight. And thank yeah. you all for calling in and being with us. Thank you, everyone. May you be blessed, may you be blessed, may you be blessed, and may all be blessed and healed and have intentions that are full of love, uh, fulfilled uh, in the presence of God. And thank you for being on this call and co-creating it with us, with our guides and our angels. And mm-hmm. we were all doing this together. It wasn't just the three of us. So thank you so much for being no. here. Yeah. No, we're thank all in you. this together. Thank you. <laughs> many blessings. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.